core Spring Security plugin and demonstrated how to include it into an existing application. I now want to go a little further by showing you how to integrate the plugin with an Ajax based user interface. The example Hubbub application already has some Ajax elements. When you post a new message, that's an Ajax request. But there's a problem we need to solve. Take a look at the application running in Firefox. All seems fine, but the HTTP session for the logged in user has expired. Let's see what happens when I try to post a new message. Nothing. The trouble is, Ajax requests need to be handled specially. Let's go back to STS and fix the problem. The first thing we need to do is add a new action to the login controller if it doesn't already exist. It's called Auth Ajax and it's executed whenever an Ajax request requires authentication. The simplest thing to do here is return a 401 or unauthorized status code. Of course, it's up to the client to handle that response. How that's done is very application and JavaScript library dependent. For Hubbub, I'm going to modify the Ajax tag used to post new messages. The adaptive tags allow you to execute JavaScript functions per status code, so I'm going to add one for the 401 response. It triggers a show login function that displays a dynamic login form. Where do the function and form come from? If you take a look at the post layout, you'll see that a template called Ajax Auth is rendered. This was copied from the Spring Security Plugins user guide. I now want to test the changes, so I go back to Firefox and refresh the page. This requires me to authenticate again. I currently have a valid session, so I have to invalidate it somehow. I like to manually delete the session cookie from Firefox. Now if I try to post the message, I'm asked to authenticate via that dynamic login form, and then I can try to post again, and this time it succeeds. That's it for the basics of Ajax and authentication. I now want to look at custom login forms. I have one ready to go for Hubbub in the sidebar login template. This contains a straightforward HTML form. The important points are the form method must be post, the form URL must be J Spring Security Check, the name of the username field must be J underscore username, and the password field name must be J underscore password. To activate the sidebar, I just need to include it in the post layout. So I just find out where my other sidebar panel is. And of course, the login panel should only be displayed if the user is not logged in. We're not quite done yet. The plugin will still redirect users back to the default login page when authentication is required. Fortunately, this is easily resolved by adding a couple of settings to config.groovy. Here they are at the end of the file. I've just configured them to redirect to the home page. As I have modified these settings, I'll have to restart the server for the changes to take effect. When I now go back to Firefox and click on My Timeline, I'm redirected to the home page. I just enter my username and password in the login sidebar, and the application lets me in. That's it for these Spring Security Plugin screencasts. 
As you've seen, the plugin makes it easy to incorporate simple access control into your application. It also affords you ready access to the more advanced features of Spring Security. Check out the plugin documentation and the other plugins in the Spring Security stable to find out more.